software development has been hit by many hypes. This new alarming trend of people being replaced by AI is just another hype. Nothing new here, just history repeating itself as usual. The cycle is anew. Software engineer demand has surged and crashed in waves. Back before the 1980s, mainframes ruled the world. Software development was mostly reserved for academics and researchers. Average people had no chance to break into this protected circle. Coding at home wasn't a thing yet, because a computer back then wouldn't fit in a normal home and it would cost more than the home itself. In 1980, a mainframe could cost hundreds of thousands, while the median US house price was around 60,000. But then the desktop computer arrived. The first computers weren't cheap. A fully equipped IBM 5150 could easily exceed $10,000. The first Mac would bring you back by $7,500. And you could save a lot by buying a Commodore 64 for a little less than $2,000 in today's money. By the way, the 64 in Commodore 64 refers to its 64 kilobytes of RAM, not megabytes or gigabytes. This was a big deal at the time. In 1982, most home computers had far less memory, often in the 4 to 16 kilobytes range. Now, once the desktop computers took off, everything changed. Programming was no longer the privilege of a few academics. These privileged few must have felt like the engineers today. Those who resist change would suddenly become obsolete or confined to working on slowly outdated mainframes. The 1990s brought the internet explosion. Suddenly, everyone and their mother wanted a website. You could charge tens of thousands of dollars for a simple, one-page static HTML site. Developers were rare and worth their weight in gold. Some made enough to retire early. James Altucher, a famous contemporary thinker and one of my favorite authors, is one of the entrepreneurs who made a fortune by riding this wave. James was among the just about five people in New York back in the mid-90s who knew how to build the websites. While working at HBO, he founded Reset Inc. and hired himself to build HBO's first website. That was back in 1994. He charged six-figure fees for HTML builds like $250,000 for American Express, all while still working full-time at HBO for 40 k per year. A few years later, he sold Reset Inc. for $15 million. But then came the website builders. Suddenly, any high schooler with a mouse could spin up a site in an afternoon. Asking for tens of thousands of dollars for a static HTML site was a thing of the past. But as the tools got easier, the hype got louder. That's how we entered the era of the big dot-com bubble. It started out as a digital gold rush. The web was new, exciting, untamed. Investors threw money at anything with a dot-com at the end of its name. Startups with no product, no revenue, and sometimes no business model were raising millions, sometimes hundreds of millions, just by promising to disrupt something. Companies like Pets.com, Webvan, and eToys burned through cash with glossy websites and big Super Bowl ads, but no sustainable plan to make money. And for a while, it worked. Stock prices soared, IPOs were creating instant millionaires. If you had a tech startup, you didn't need a business model, you just needed hype. But by 2000, reality hit hard. As interest rates climbed and investor patience wore thin, the bubble popped. Stock prices collapsed, billions of dollars were wiped out, more than half of all dot-com companies shut down between 2000 and 2002. Layoffs swept through Silicon Valley, 401ks disappeared, the dot-com boom was over. This bubble burst just like the ones before it. As for the developers who built all those flashy websites, things looked bleak for a while, but good engineers don't sit still for long. Soon, a new wave started forming, cloud computing and blockchain. The early 2010s gave us the cloud computing boom. 
scalable services and decentralized platforms drew in the best talent and even better funding. With services like AWS, Azure and Google Cloud, anyone could deploy a scalable app in minutes. Startups loved it, enterprises feared it, and developers, they suddenly were in high demand again. At the same time, something else was bubbling up from the shadows of cryptography forums, blockchain. First it was Bitcoin, then Ethereum, then thousands of next big things. The idea of a decentralized, trustless system caught fire. Everyone wanted in, from techies to VCs. By the mid-2010s, cloud and crypto were the new gold rush. And, just like in every cycle before, a new wave of developers jumped on board. Some genuinely curious, others chasing the money. But of course, no tech cycle is complete without a crash. For crypto, the first cold shower came in 2018, when the ICO hype train finally derailed. An ICO, or Initial Coin Offering, was basically a crowdfunding campaign. But instead of equity, you got tokens, often tied to a vague promise of revolutionizing some industry. White papers were slapped together in a weekend. Billions flowed in. Over 80% of these projects turned out to be scams, vaporware, or both. And when the dust settled, Bitcoin had lost more than 80% of its value. Just like that, the dream of instant crypto riches vanished, along with a lot of people's savings. Cloud computing, meanwhile, didn't implode. It quietly matured. Costs kept rising, misconfigured servers led to security breaches, startups that once bragged about infinite scale suddenly realized they were hemorrhaging money on over-provisioned Kubernetes clusters and idle serverless functions. The honeymoon phase was over. Reality, like always, kicked in. The 2020 Covid crash, with its lockdowns, uncertainty and economic disruption, froze markets and entire industries. That one hit hard. We barely woke up after the post-Covid hangover when the next hype cycle began. The AI boom started with ChatGPT breaking the internet in late 2022. Then came Claude, Grok, DeepSeek and a dozen others claiming to change everything. Tech giants pivoted overnight. Every keynote became an AI keynote. Companies that hadn't updated their products in years suddenly added with AI to their landing pages and saw their valuations double. VCs are back. Layoffs are being rebranded as AI transformation initiatives. AI startups are getting funded on page decks made by ChatGPT. But the warning signs? They are already here. Dangerous AI hallucinations can ruin trust and lives. Copyright lawsuits are piling up. Your hard work and research turn into someone else's training data without your consent. Companies are replacing junior devs with LLMs, but who's going to debug the mess? How about the growing talent gap? Who's going to review the unlimited amount of garbage code spewed out by some AI? Who's going to work with the latest SDKs and technologies if no LLM knows about it yet? If you started to develop a growing sense of déjà vu, it's not by mistake. Just like with dot-com, cloud and crypto, the AI boom is creating a rush of optimism and inflated expectations. Will this bubble burst? Actually, the question now isn't if this bubble will burst, it's how loud it will be when it does. AI companies started to increase their prices the honeymoon is over and they can't afford to lose money by providing one-size-fits-all subscription models. CloudCode recently introduced daily and weekly usage quotas in response to individuals who were abusing the system through background coding tasks. OpenAI introduced more expensive tiers for its high-end model. And they are still losing money. DeepSeek's long-awaited and touted R2 version has never arrived. In the meantime, companies keep churning out AI-generated code and let go of their software developers. And we're seeing a clear spike in quality, performance and security issues. It's unlikely that's just a coincidence. 
GitHub's own research indicates that heavy use of Copilot leads to measurable declines in overall code quality. Almost one-third of Copilot-generated code snippets had one or more security weaknesses, including high-risk ones. Veracode studied over 100 major LLMs across 80 code tasks and found that nearly half of AI-generated code had known security vulnerabilities, most of which would have been easily detected by a human reviewer. Based on my own experience, I can state that AI can produce subtle, shady bugs and logical flaws that are hard to spot, especially given the high volume of code produced. Over-reliance on AI and the trend of laying off actual experts who could ring the alarm bell cannot lead to a positive outcome in the long run. So the only question left is, when will this bubble burst? Hope it's not before every good software engineer decides to switch careers to organic farming or starts producing craft beer. I hope you enjoyed this one. Now, go check out my related video on why I strongly believe AI can't replace real software engineers. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.